Zay, Jehovah be my poppy though. Telling every man to repent, Rappy though. That means do it quickly and do not be slow. On social media, sharing the gospel. What you block me for? Because I'm a Hebrew, some of y'all be comico. Stuck on the internet, all we debate is theology, meaning the prophecies, denomination philosophy. Somebody gotta be addressing the fatherless and widows and poverty and all these atrocities and our cities. Big talkers and little doers is what I call it. Jesus worked among the hollers and drunks, was called an alcoholic. He wasn't one, but it lets you know he wasn't at the office. He was healing and preaching to the poor. That's the rock of offense. He said, if you are really part of my crew, my disciples do the types of things that I do, then we will shine like the sun at noon when the sky blew. Not hearers, but doers are justified. That is Bible. Oh, no, no, never do we dim down. We about to shine on the world like a lighthouse. Hope for the soul, living life in the darkness. Salt of the earth, we about to turn the lights up. Oh, oh, oh. Corner alleys, pimp daddies and ski masks Shatter glass on the caddies from rivals who speed past Needles stuck in the people, find fetus in trash bags Illegal weapons uncover, cross lines get hashtagged When they get ticked, toes get tagged fast Bullets like bleach, pull it a hook or get clean fast Why these fathers are absent? Why these mothers are left the morning? They carrying caskets, now a son is a past tense Choking on packs of potion, they popping out packs of pills Traveling, firing oceans and coasting and getting killed They applaud in all the chaos, soon it will be revealed what happens when the sun shine down? It's getting real. See us on top of towers. We navigate for the pilot. Lens focus on target. Guide them into the harbor. Cats and rods in a river. We hoping they take the bait. Hook them, pull them to safety. Attract them with love and grace. Light it up. No, 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 never do we dim down. We about to shine around the world like a lighthouse. Hope for the soul, living life in the darkness. Salt of the earth, we about to turn the lights up. me salty, I'm just seasoned, holy power in my being, being honest, I ain't perfect, God's spirit drives my purpose, like a coal when you unearth it, polished diamonds move the surface, now we shine despite the serpents, lurking, trying to draw the curtains on us, denounce the separatist edifice, we've been fed, bless the food upon your stove, add a loaf of the living bread, this oath is bigger than coat you know in inside your head, spew the truth that's rooted within you, the pollen spreads, plant the seed and watch the sunflower, before the blossom there's rain, never equated with pain, that's hydropower, when the sea is choppy, I'll be dropping down to my knees, grateful for peace that passes all the logic in me, safe from the streets and so many evils that men do, putting stress on your men too, how we suffer is sinful, but his promise is a promise that ain't ever been broken, can't see this gospel glow, I guess your eyes ain't ever been open, wake up, no, 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 never do we dim down, never do we dim down, the world like a lighthouse, yeah, 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 life in the darkness, salt the earth, we about to turn the lights up, we about to light it up, light it up. We about to light it up, light it up, light it up. We about to light it up, light it up. Yeah. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. What's good? What's good? Oh, we done pulled a double nighter around here. What's cracking with y'all, man? God bless. Let me see. Um, all right, all right, Sister V Love. Oh, appreciate that. Thank you for being here. It looked like you was first in the queue as well. Most high bless you there, dear sis. Brother LA was good, was good with you. Driz Judah in the building. Salute to you, King. Nicole Levels came in getting her young dance moves cracking. You know what I'm saying? Salute to you, sis. Peacemaker Music was good with it. Salute, salute. Obadiah was good with it. Salute, salute. Salvation. Hello, hello, hello. PJ Determined. Most high bless you. Thank you. Hey, if you like any of the music, that's all for my new album. The new album is called um, Righteous Smoke, and it's only streamable on my site or purchasable. I haven't put it on the apple musics the itunes i know for a lot of people that's just what you guys are used to and praise god for you i do got three other full-length albums and an ep on the other sites my, my 
all my stuff before this uh the caterpillar album from 2017 the cocoon album from 2018 um the what else um what else i got out there oh the it's chh volume one ep from the fall of 2019 then i put out salt may of 2020 that was my last full length album and now this new one um but the righteous smoke if you go to zadok the god hop mc dot bandcamp dot com you can actually go and check it out there people been hitting me up hey bro is this on apple music is this on itunes is this on title and i'm not gonna say unfortunately i'm gonna say just simply no it's not <laughs> because um them streaming platforms just I, i'm just not with giving them the bulk of my money i'll let this do what it do for a while it may go on streaming way later or something months down the line possibly but um yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and fall back from giving them all my stuff um and just letting them make all the money off my stuff y'all ain't gonna get 10 20 000 streams out of me and send me 400 dollars <laughs> nah if, if they sending me 400 dollars that mean they got a thousand they got 14 1500 dollars are gonna send me 400 just as little pieces of uh playlists and and, and little cuts from advertisers they put on these stuff so at the end of the day y'all that's what it is and for some of y'all who just might be in the fan and and supporter of music mode i understand it because i listen to i, I hey i got a spotify um uh uh a monthly subscription i love listening to everyone music um but i listen to people who big i'm listening to people who got 10 20 000 listeners a month on, on their stuff so the money they might get is way different from me i'm not that big artist and so you know i, I gotta do what i gotta do for me and i appreciate those of you who definitely have supported many of you have and it's humbling amen um let me see who up in here. Aaron Denmark is in the building. Salute and shalom to you. I believe this is Travesia, Travesia White. Peace and blessings to you. Welcome. I'm not I'm not familiar with that name, so this might be your first time joining. If it is, salute. And if not, forgive me for not recognizing you before. Die Hard Christian. He said, you, hey, bro, a hey, Die Hard Christian. I think you might, this might be your first time or your second time here. Yesterday might have been your first Hey, bro, you every Friday night, we do an open dojo. So this past Friday, it was. I do Bible Q&A every Friday night. Well, almost every Friday night, unless I got to travel for ministry or something. But, bro, tap in with us on Fridays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Bro, we do it every week. It's called the Open Bible Dojo. The topic is whatever questions are in the chat. Or first, the people who get their questions answered first are people who do what my bro doing right here. My bro, Ash the Town. What's up, brody? It is what it is, what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, hey, Die Hard, I put the link in the chat. And today I did it. It was, it was an accident. I thought I was sending it to bro, but whatever. Because I'm not answering questions like in a question form today. Um, I thought I was sending him it and I posted it in the chat. But on Friday nights, bro, the way you see that StreamYard link at the pinned at the top of the chats, um, you hit that joint and you get to come back here and you could be on camera like me. If not, keep your camera off, but at least keep your mic open and you get to ask questions and we dialogue for a little bit real time, like live. <laughs> um, let me see who we got here. Who else? Ah. What up, Aisham? Salute to you, King. Seven from Adam. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, my sis was going in crazy on that joint, right? Uh, Driz Judah said, what's the website again? Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I will do this. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Uh, hmm. There we go. Oh, hold on, everyone. Okay. Ah, hold on. There we go. I'll go ahead and pin that in the chat. <laughs> All right. 
All right. So, okay, so you'll see I replaced uh, the earlier pinned message with the link to my site where those of you who might be interested in the music can get it. Amen. Hey, thanks for asking that, Driz, because it didn't even come to mind to do that. Salute to you. Um, who else we got here? Mark Brown, salute to you. Thank you, bro, for tapping in with us from Facebook. Salute to the Facebook family. The realness. Duh. Realness is in the building. Sheffler 51, what it is. Y'all already see Young Ash is back here getting it in. I don't know if, yo, he looked like the black Bruce Lee in this avatar right here. I don't know if he got on a karate gi or if that's just like a dark blue button up. Bro, tell me what's happening here, King. Tell me what's happening. Ashton. <laughs> Oh, who's oh, oh. yo? No, no, no. That's a that's a dark blue button. I had to take a a work picture a couple years ago. You know, that was before oh, the. Oh, so that's what that is. But bro, dread, dread. bro, if it had the little white under the outside of the collar, yo, you could have been. Mis I, I would have thought you had on a karate gi, son. Man, listen, man. I, you know, I came, I came, I came up in the dojos of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what's up, bro. Yo, we got Skinny, man. Hey, what up, man? Hey, Skinny, man. Hey, tell me that was an accident, man. Tell me you dropped that, man. Yo, what's good with you, Skin? God bless you, Tell bro. me that ain't my CD, Skinny, man. Hey, man, tell me that. Hey, man. <laughs> it's, it's Batman. It's Batman. Batman. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm done. Um, Shirley Greer, welcome. Peace and blessings to you, Queen. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is partly happening tonight, Shirley, because you asked for two nights in a row. And you, you got us up here working all double time and everything. But praise God, I'm glad that people are edified enough to say, hey, I would like to hear more of this. So we're going to give a little bit more tonight by God's grace. Amen. So everybody, y'all know what it is. It's your brother Zadok Ben Israel, a.k.a. the God Hop MC. Hashtag just the best of nobody special, a.k.a. Young Chimney, because I am built for the young smoke. The dojo is open. You come on in here and take your shoes off and check your sock game and make sure it's on point. And start them warm up cotters because it's about to get biblical. Amen. Amen. Hey, you know what? And I really respect that. That's awesome. And that's humbling. Uh, Sheffler said, um, they picked up the record today and didn't used to be a fan of rap, but rap with a message. I like it. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that for someone who isn't a, a big rap fan at all. Thank you so much. That means a lot. It means that the spirit in you relates with the message you're hearing it and the message is undeniable. So praise God. That's humbling. Amen. Amen. So look, y'all, we ain't going to overhold y'all uh, too much longer. I'm going to say, if you would like to support the ministry financially tonight as we go on, if you feel so led, look at the ticker right there on the bottom of the screen. It got the ways that you can do that. If you want to reach out for communication, the email address is on the ticker. And if you happen to be on Instagram or I, uh, uh, Twitter, give me a follow at the God Hop MC. And last but not least, for those of you who might be tuning in, from Facebook, I ask that you would hit them thumbs up and them hearts when it comes to your mind. It helps the algorithm. Uh, for those of you who are on YouTube, if you're not a follower or, or a subscriber, should I say, I ask you would consider becoming one and hit that thumbs up before you leave out. So, Ashton, we got to do this again, man. We we we, we gotta we gonna have to step it up a young notch. So you should have some things. We gonna we gonna start this off in the book of Zechariah chapter two, right? Um, let me go ahead and let, just let me get everything together so I can make sure that I'm going to share the screen and have everything ready. Just here. Okay. Yeah, exactly, Zach. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. A salute to Sister Ruhama popping in the building. Most high bless you. I see we got young, we got my brother, uh, uh, Elephant Man broadcast in the building. What's good with you, Ot? We got T. Clark on. What up, homie? How you doing, man? Welcome to the dojo. You know what I mean? You feel me? Yes, yes, yes. L. Cam Barlow tapping in. All right, we starting to get people coming on up in here. So, you tailored and popped in. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just popping up in here. Salute to you, Mother Most High. Bless you. So, 
brethren, what I want to do is I want to pick up where we left off yesterday. And yesterday I was putting an argument on the table, I believe supported by scripture that was dealing with the reason for the schism that can seem to exist. And it's almost like it ain't going nowhere between Israelite believers in Christ and Gentile believers in Christ. But I want you also to understand something as well. Jealousy in part hasn't just happened to Hebrews who believe in Christ, because I'll tell you, a lot of Hebrews who believe in Christ, if their doctrine is sound, they get over themselves and they start to understand, man, I'm saved the same way that a person from any other nation is saved. It is by belief and faith in Hamashiach. And so you don't have any angst between you and others. The angst might come in doctrinal arguments, but that can happen between you and other Israelites when it comes to doctrinal disagreements. But the thing is, uh, wait, hold on. Let me see that there. Hold on. Sister V Love said she sent a PayPal gift. Oh, hold on. Let me hold on. When, when you did that, you did that sometime today. You did that today? Hold on. She did that today. Hold on now. You got me. Look, hold on. I had to go inside. Look right quick. Let me see what then happened around chow. Somebody done looked up for them. She done looked out for the brother. You know what? I'll go ahead and get to that at another time. I ain't going to just get overly vain with it. Um, I'm going to check that out, sis. Uh, just let me know where you sent it from or whatever, and I will go ahead and check it out. But whatever you did, man, most high bless you. Wow, that's it. Man, that's that's pretty dope. That's unexpected. Thank you so much. Um, uh, praise y'all. Thank you so much, Sister Greer, for uh, sharing that right there in the super chat. Um, praise the most high. That's all I can really say. Now, it don't when we talk about this, it's not merely about those who are going to believe in Christ. No, the nation of Israel has sinned mightily before Yah. They are the only nation that broke an agreement between them and God. Yet all the nations have transgressed the laws of God, but Israel was specifically in covenant in a way no one else was, correct? Now, Israel, the nation didn't like the fact that the gospel of Christ wasn't only giving Gentiles hope as if they could get some kind of um, saving grace from Yahweh Israel thought was exclusively belonging to them. But once, once Israelites couldn't deny it, they wanted to put more burden. They wanted to put the burdens that they put on themselves that they weren't able to handle. Peter said, us and our fathers weren't able to bear these burdens that we're trying to put on the Gentiles. The burden that they were trying to put on themselves and holding couldn't meet up to, they were trying to put that on the Gentiles. The burden was what? Trying to do the, uh, trying to keep God's commandments under the auspices of the old covenant. This is hard for many to accept. You were not going to, the old, by the time Yeshua and them popped up, the old covenant is on its way out because Israel had been breaking it. Roman occupation was proof that Israel was, the old covenant agreement is done between Yah and Israel. And it's, trans, but the done is a, is a transitionary period. Y'all, the old covenant is over. Any of you Hebrews who believe you just going to open up the Torah and do everything in there, God does not require that of you, not under the old covenant. Under the new covenant, he requires his heart, his, his Torah to grow in your conscience. But many things won't be applicable to you until you get to the land. But the morality of the Torah is always ever before your face. The most high, not just like he didn't do it to Joseph, just like he didn't do it to Nehemiah or, or Daniel. Whatever the Babylonian way of life was when Daniel served the king, Daniel was under the mercy of Yah to live in the kingdom. So guess what? If Daniel had to shave all his facial hair, he wasn't going to be held under, yo, you got to grow your beard out. You can't never shave it, Daniel, because you're an Israelite. No, Negroes. However, Nehemiah had to dress. He probably had to dress like Persians dress. When Joseph had to save, in order to save the nation, Joseph had to live like the Egyptians. Joseph had to shave. 
the hair on his body in order to be in Pharaoh's presence because in their society, things ran differently. But hey, whether you got a beard, a full beard, or you shave your body, that ain't going to determine whether you love your brother in your heart. That's not going to determine whether you lust after a man's wife. That's not going to determine whether you got a heart, a thieving and conniving heart, whether you're one who bears false witness or dishonor your parents or worship idols. You understand what I'm saying? So for many, I know, I know that what I'm saying tonight going to get me a little bit more um, angst by some in the Israelite community, but some will understand where I'm coming from. And I think they'll agree for the most part because there are no Hebrews I know who can say that they've just done everything according to the covenant after their quote unquote proclaimed awakening. So brothers and sisters, Israel is a nation, not believers in Christ, even though they were too. But Israel as a nation did not like the fact that they had a problem with Yeshua when he was among the Jews. But when Yeshua was gone from the earth and now the apostles went forward into the nations where Jews were scattered and by proxy, that means you're going to be exposed to all these other ethnicities because the Jews are the minority everywhere else you go. Guess what? That opens up the opportunity for Gentiles to hear. But Gentiles don't live in your land. They ain't got to come to your land and live under the old covenant in order to believe in the message that Christ died for their sins. And they know what their sins are. When Christ and them came, when, when Paul and them came preaching repentance, these weren't all these people they preaching to hadn't read the Bible and knew all the Torah, this, the Tanakh. This. No. But what did Paul say? What did the apostle say? Yo, God, there's a righteousness that's been found outside the law that God is proving that in these nations, you got people who simply live in by their conscience, even accusing them of things that are wrong. But the downfall is that same conscience that will say that's not right. And it be agreeable. God is like, yeah, see, your conscience told you that wasn't right. And, 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 and that's right. That same conscience could also excuse other things that God got a problem with, which is why the Gentiles needed Christ too, just as Israel. Israel had the covenant, didn't keep it, and needed Christ. And Gentile, the Gentiles didn't have the covenant, but still had consciences that accused them of guilt or excused them of guilt. So as much good as any Israelite would think existed in the nation of Israel, God can fairly say, I found just as much good outside of Israel. And they, I didn't even have no covenant with them. Tainted. Guess what? Isaiah 64, Israel, your righteousness is filthy rags. The most high found some little, he found forms of righteousness all over the earth, but it was still filthy rags. This is why all have been proven under sin. But Israelites who don't get it, this is what Hebrews say by they still find themselves blinded with the veil over their heart every time they read the old covenant not that we're not supposed to read it but simply that if that's what you're focused on you'll never be able to tap into what you need to and you definitely will try to hold back anyone else who sees isn't this what yeshua said directly to the pharisees you have he said he told them he said the kingdom is within you Yeshua told the Pharisees the kingdom was in them, but they refused to walk in what was actually in them. And guess what? He said they refused to go in and they hindered anyone else who was going in. And he said, and y'all cross land and sea to try and go to the other nations and create a proselyte. And by y'all process, y'all wind up creating a child of hell who's twice as bad as y'all, right? Mm. Hey, Tumar, that's a great text. When that stranger woman came, Yeshua said, I ain't found this kind of faith in all of Israel. 
He ain't found that kind of faith in Israel. But it is what it is. Let us start in Zechariah tonight. Let's start in that old, old. You ready, Ashton? Yep. All right, Brody, let's get it in. Let's start in the book of Zechariah. Um, hold on. Let's start at, at verse 7. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Up, Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. Amen. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of the hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. Hold on, hold on, and hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. In the day that the Most High dwells in the midst of Zion, this see, this is the hope of the nations as Israel is looking to be brought to an expected end. We have to not hinder, put it like this, we won't hinder the work of the most high. But if we get in the way, we're going to wind up fighting against the most high. Many nations shall be joined to Yah in that day. Notice, not only will the remnant of Israel, according to the election of grace, be set up in power in Zion, the apple of his eye. But many nations, see y'all, this is one thing. All nations haven't oppressed Israel just because Israel wound up scattered among them. Israel ran to some places voluntarily. And everywhere they went, they weren't oppressed and beat into bloody hell. But once you come into somebody's land, by default, you become the minority. You not the head there, you the tail. Which, why you deserve to go to somebody else's land and become the head, but they can't come to yours? You don't want them to come to yours and be the head. You're scattered in captivity for breaking the commandment. So if you was taken by force into it, or if you were, if you will, captivity, if your captivity is basically exile. Everywhere Israel wound up, people didn't bring Israel there by force, all right? Many nations will be joined to the Lord in that day. And another thing I want to tell y'all is according to Leviticus chapter 26, the Most High said that when Israel found themselves in their enemy's lands, that they would waste away in their own sin and that the land of their enemies would eat them up. So Israel brought their sin with them. Israel didn't come to these lands and become a humble people. Israel took the sin that got them kicked out with them. Many nations shall be joined to Yahuwah in that day. And what, Ashta, shall what? Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people. Wow. Continue. And I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Hallelujah. And the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land. And will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. And I'm gonna tell you right now, all of these peoples of the nations who are gonna join the Lord in that day ain't gonna be your servant under your boot. No, the nations, the Lord said, the kings of the earth and the forces, the armies of the nations shall bring gifts to help rebuild Zion. All them nations ain't coming to be under your boot. They're going to, in a sense, bow to you in the sense that now you're redeemed. God has set you up. And when they come to the land to bring their gifts to the Lord, they handing it to Israel because Israel is the priesthood to all nations. But these kings go back to their lands and rule. These, their armies go back. That's the only way that at the end of the so-called millennial reign that most people read about in uh, 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 in Revelation chapter 20, 
Didn't it say Gog, the armies of Gog and Magog and many confederates with them was going to come up and attack Jerusalem when Satan is left out of when Satan is let out of the bottomless pit for a small season? How they still how Gog and Magog still got armies? I thought Israel ruled everybody. And how could an army of Gog and Magog pop up and come? And when you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, it gets into detail. North armies gonna raise up out of North Africa and even become Confederate out of Libya and all of that. So see, you gotta actually read. That's a good text that Obadiah put on the table right there in the comment section, Zechariah 14. He said, this will be the punishment of, he said, and the nation shall come up to serve me. And then he gave the example of the punishment if they refuse. See, Yeshua gonna rule with a rod of iron. It's gonna be a process for the nations to understand. Okay, we submit Christ. Brothers and sisters, the Israel will be in power in the promise of Abraham and any nation who's going to come to, quote unquote, talk to the Lord, to come learn of the Lord. The law shall go forth from Zion by default. Who's in the land with control by God's will? Israel, it is your reuniting with God and being obedient. That's where your power lies. Not in your military might or nothing of that nature. Never have and never will. God has always been Israel's glory. But Israel won't be an oppressor. Israel will teach the nations how to serve because now Israel is a servant, truly, and can show everyone else how to do it right. That's just the truth of the scripture. Some people will come in, well, where does the church come into play? Who do you think the most... Who do you think is going to be raising up them other nations to come and be obedient to the most high? His servants from the ethnos or the goyim who are redeemed and believe in Christ. They're going to be the, the, the they're going to be the driving force in their own nations. And some people will move from their inheritances to come live in the land of Israel. And Ezekiel 47 is clear on how they'll be treated and on how they will choose what tribe they want to live among too. But let's move on. Hey, Ash, let's move on, bro. We're going to stay in Zechariah. Let's go over to chapter eight, bro. Zechariah eight. If you're just joining us, it's your brother, the God Hopham. See, I'm joined tonight by my brother, Ashton. We getting it in here in the dojo. Y'all see that the noise is already going. You can smell the sweat. You can hear all the highs. You can hear the you can hear the, the clashing of wooden swords and spears as we practice this righteousness and this biblical understanding. So come in and join us, man. You know what I mean? Take your shoes off. Make sure your sock game on point and just get in where your young fit in. So, Ashton, now that we're in, um, in Zechariah, let's go down to start at verse 18. Zechariah 8 and 18. Zechariah 8 and 18. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feasts for the house of Judah. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Peoples shall yet come, inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us continue to go and pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will go also. Okay. Yes, many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. They're going to seek him. They're coming to pray. They ain't coming to be oppressed by no damn Israelites, man. They're strong nations, people. They're not weak. They're coming to humble themselves before the revealed Mashiach. But how you want to, you, you come in to see the Mashiach? This is how you do it. Read verse 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, 10 men from every language of the nations shall mm. grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Mm, mm, mm. Ten men 
from every language of the nations. That it, I don't take that number 10 just literally alone, but he's letting you know it's going to be many people out of every nation. You'll have like 10 cats out of every tongue spoken on the planet. That means they're coming from everywhere to Zion. And when they see a Hebrew, when they step into the boundaries of the land, they're like, yo, Israel, what's up? Yo, we coming up to Jerusalem with you, bro. We want to come pray before the Lord. We heard the Lord is with you. Why? Because they're going to see Israel back in their land. Set up righteousness, peace. When the Lord said they will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, when the nations hear of that kind of atmosphere, they come in to talk, man. And that's Israel's glory to be the ones that when they come to see the Lord, you got to deal with Israel, not an oppressor, not someone to replace the modern day to just merely become like what whatever people think modern day socialists, communists, and capitalists are. No, you're coming to do something that's going to take over the entire planet. And it won't be anything like anything people can point to unless it's something from long ago in the text, you know, like Acts 2. <laughs> Yo, so how are you going to take this from the nations? There is no oppression here. These people are under your boot and they just ain't got no power in the world. When the Most High tells Israel they inherit the nations, it's just by default because you stand next to the Most High. So when the nations come to bow before the Lord, you're standing there and you see them bowing. And you're not boasting in pride and glory, but you're basking in the fact that, wow, look at where Yah has brought us that. Where are the ones he put in front of the nations when they come to bow before him? We are, And you got to be righteous. Only if Israel is righteous can they even enjoy that. Other than that, the nations, the nations is looking past you, man. This is the purpose of Israel the whole time. Not to get saved and and be on the cruise ship leaving. <laughs> Yo, y'all waving to everybody who can't come. Hey, everybody else that exists on the planet, everybody else. We going off in the sunset praising y'all. The scriptures we reading is different than what we're hearing. They take out of context when the Lord says, the sons of the stranger and the alien shall be your vine dressers and the people who draw your water and the people who chop down your wood. Well, the same way that by stereotype people, yo, you know, what's funny. People don't think, look, African-Americans are here, but we're here in the United States. We, we ain't known nothing else too much, too many of us. So we feel we're American, like we're here. This is our country, right? So what was funny was during the damn election season, white folk, black folk, all those illegal aliens, they're taking, they're taking jobs from us. And I challenge any so-called Republican or Democrat. I don't care your ethnicity, but you just, you just so damn American. All right. So you mean to tell me that it's the Mexicans, the illegal aliens who coming across the border being hired by Driscoll, all you damn hypocrites who go into your Trader Joe's. What's that other joint? You got Trader Joe's. What's that other? It's another one people love going to. What's that other one, Ash, that's pretty famous out here? You got Trader Joe's. Um, Whole Foods. Whole Foods. No all Wegman. these other places. What, what was that? What's another one? Danny Wegg. Young you Wegman. Wegmans. And Wegman started up here. One of the it's one a lot of people starting to just get tuned on to it. But Wegmans was founded by the uh, Wegman family, Danny and Rob Wegman in them um, in Rochester, New York, two hours from here. So Wegmans is our old is our old grocery store. We've been shopping in Wegmans for two decades here. Your cost, your your your, your, your food lions, Kroger's, whatever it is, right? You go into the food section. Oh, I'm eating healthy. I'm eating organic. I'm a vegan. And you don't, and, and you, and, and when you get all of these organic fruits, y'all yeah, know all these organic fruits ain't just coming from your backyard. When you go to Florida, when you go to the Gulf, when you go out to California to them almond farms, them grape farms, 
uh, uh, um, um, them, them, all of them wine distilleries all out there, all out in Nevada and Arizona and New Mexico. We Negroes and every other ethnicity that's so American, you want to speak against the illegal immigrant. They're taking jobs from Americans. What jobs? Which ones? You mean to tell me you wanted you and your children wanted to go out into the 110 degree heat of the desert and pick during the day, not nighttime. Y'all going to pick the strawberries and the blueberries and the almonds and the olives and all that. Y'all been waiting to do that. African-Americans in California and all that ain't trying to do that. Neither is the white folk. I chat. I dare you. What you talking about all the chicken plants down in the Carolinas and the Virginias and all of that. In Alabama and Tennessee, all oh, the illegal immigrants are stopping all them Negroes in Alabama, all them poor white folk who just looking. They've been waiting to get into the chicken plant and work 12, 14 hour long shifts on their feet six days a week. Y'all lying. You niggas is lying, man. And every time I put that in the face of these so-called people who say this, guess what? They have no comeback to me because they are, they don't even want, these people want their kids to code, get into real estate, be entrepreneurs, invest in crypto, the stock market. You are not raising your kid to go work. It, I'm telling you, y'all, they are lying. These illegal immigrants ain't came over here and took not no jobs from you. They came because of the jobs Americans refused to work. See, most people don't want to admit America is like Sodom and Gomorrah now. What did the Lord say in Ezekiel was his problem with Sodom and Gomorrah? He said the nation had become idle, but yet was full of bread. How you become lazy, but yet you got you full of food. More people want to live in leisure and people on the lower part of the totem pole will be oppressed and exploited for low wages to pick the fields and do the menial tasks so less people can work and live the life. Soon as you on your dog going uh, 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 you, you go on YouTube just trying to watch something and here come a commercial. Hey, do you want to learn how to make seventeen thousand dollars a day and not even use your own money? Like, damn, what? <laughs> Do you want to know how to buy houses and you ain't got to take $10 out your own pocket? But the reason I'm going there is because those people will come here and they will work them jobs and lift themselves out of poverty. They will come and landscape for you Y'all think it's a stereotypical joke when people talk about you. Yo, go to the D.C., Maryland area and go to the Home Depot at 7 in the morning and see all the Mexican homies standing out there because they know the contractors is coming to the pro desk. Them dudes out there like, hey, I work. I work. I'm good. Nigga tell you he'll work for free today to show you how he get down. Like, I leave when you leave. <laughs> impress this contractor contractor like hey man meet me the same time tomorrow homie guess what guess what the mexicans who live on the other side of the border the people from el salvador the people coming up from colombia guatemala all of them places they will come here and they will be if you will they'll work in your restaurants They'll work in your meat packing plants. They'll work and pick your crops all in California and in Nevada and Arizona and all of that. New Mexico, Texas. They'll come do that for you. And guess what they're here for? To secure the future of their family. They see that living in your country is a better to come and work in the bottom feeder jobs of your country to them is, is a step up towards life. So when the scripture says, to Israel, when I set you back up, Yo, the strangers gonna come to your land. They're gonna be willing to be the people who work in your fields. And it's, you're not gonna be their oppressor. How do we know that? Because the Lord said when he come, the man of the earth, no nation of the earth will oppress anymore. So Israel, you're not gonna be an oppressor. These people will come to your land and they will work the same way you come to somebody else's country to get a job. 
and you not from there and you don't have no inheritance you coming to try to make a life for your family you don't tell you gonna mean that yo some people ain't gonna want to wait for their nations to become as peaceful as they hear judea will be and palestine will be from the river of egypt all the way to the euphrates people gonna relocate I don't know how some people read the Bible, but not just read, meditate. What's your meditation game look like? Read the same scriptures and sit in a circle with your brothers. You got a group you build with? Say, yo, let's actually read about the millennial kingdom. Hey, bro, we're going to read these six chapters over this week. When we get up on Shabbat or Sunday, yo, we going to, after service, yo, we going to hang out. We going to go break bread. Yo, tell me what you think that's saying, bro. What did you get out of it? What did you get? See, where I come from, that's how me and my bros been getting down since the late 90s. That's why I think how I think, y'all. I am not unique. I come from a pedigree of believers. That's I, I'm just like them. And I guess by that means they're just like me. The way we think. And we argue with each other. I just come from a certain kind of background. And I pray that more of you come from backgrounds that are critically analytical of what the text is saying and not being stuck in any church's dogma, no camp's dogma, but strictly what the scripture says. Oh, you back, bro? Okay, I seen you fall out for a minute. Okay, Ashta, let's go ahead, bro, and let's move on to our next text, man. So, hey, salute if y'all just joining. I see my bro Sean McGee them popped up in here. Salute to you, King. Makai Bot Yisrael, salute to you as well. PJ Determined and popped up in the building. Salute to you. All right, Ash. Uh, we, let, let's go to Acts, bro. Let's go to Acts 13. I want to show you all something because people might get it mixed up. And when I hear some of the quote unquote Christian believers quote these same texts, I don't like the way I hear some of my Hebrews or or um, other ethnicities who claim to believe in scripture. I don't like how they always explain this text. So I'm going to give you an explanation that might, you know, just add it to your joints. You know what I'm saying? What verse you want, brother? That's a great question, Sister V. Those are the resurrected people and those who are changed. But there's going to be a whole bunch of people who not making that first resurrection in that manner. They're just going to still be flesh and blood Hebrews who are going to be taken to the land. That's the difference there. On what Paul was talking about, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. But they said a generation will be born. So that th there's a, a thing there. And prayerfully at other times, we can get into teachings that really delve into the particulars of that. Um, okay, bro, we going to Acts Young 13. And when we get to Acts 13, bro, let's go to verse 13. Acts 13 and 13. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up, and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with a high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years until Samuel the prophet. Okay. And afterwards. Okay. So he's running down this prop. He's running down. Notice that it always start with Abraham, what the Lord did. Then it goes to Israel coming out of Egypt. He's running it down. Then he gets to David, right? And the promise made unto David. Verse 23. 
Verse 23, Ashton. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Yes. And John fulfilled his course. He said, whom think ye that I am? I'm not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I'm not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. Amen. For they that wait, 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 wait. Children of the stock of Abraham, and whoever among you that fears God. Now remember, Gentiles who dealt with a little bit of Torah and would attend synagogue and stuff, they were called the God-fearers, brothers and sisters. And they're in Asia Minor at a regular synagogue. This ain't no church. This is not full of believers in Christ. These people are about to hear about the preaching of Christ for the first time from Paul and Barnabas. When Paul and Barnabas does this, there are going to be regular Torah observant Israelites under rabbinical tradition who believe what they hear. And there are going to be God fearers among them, Gentiles. This is why in chapter 15, Pete, James says, yo, let's not trouble them who from among the Gentiles are turning unto the Lord, try to put all the Torah law on them. They wrote the letter, right? We read that uh, last night. And it said, for Moses is read in the synagogue every Sabbath. Ain't that what it said, Ashta? Yes, sir. That's what it had, had said. So what did it say right here? I'll back up verse 15. So they came into the synagogue on the Shabbat, sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue said, brothers, do y'all want to, you know, Say, you know, say to the people. So then what do they say? Men of Israel. And that's a conjunction that adds another separate entity to the first thing spoken. Men of Israel and ye that fear God. Okay, so. Unto you, this word of salvation is sent. Verse 27. For they that dwelt at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they fulfilled them in condemning him. Amen. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. When they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But so guess God, what? Paul, Paul letting them know, because Paul used to be one of them. They like brothers here. Y'all who not from Jerusalem, the brethren in Jerusalem and the rulers, the government leaders, the Sanhedrin, they didn't understand him. Neither did they really understand the what? The voice of the prophets that are read every Sabbath day. And by that misunderstanding, they even wound up bringing forth the will of God and condemning Yeshua, right? <laughs> Pardon me. So he talk about them killing him and him being put in a grave. Verse 30, brother. But God raised him from the dead mm -hmm. and he was seen many days of them, which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. Mm -hmm. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Okay, so boom. He go through all of this, right? Now look at this, verse 38, continue. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Brothers and sisters, you could not be justified from certain things, anything that deserved you getting stoned, you could not be forgiven for that unless it was in heaven. And how would you know? The only thing we read where a man was for forgiven for something that anybody else got stoned to death for was David with the Bathsheba incident. It could be other things in there, but I missed them, y'all. 
So what I'm saying is that kind of justification that David got, we all through Christ, if we believe in him as the work of the father, will receive that same kind of stuff. And you, and, and look, man, I, I, I'm going to say it like this, myself and a lot of guys y'all might see me with, and, and many of y'all may not know my circles like that, but you know, but some of y'all do. I'm around dudes who done shot up a lot of stuff, man. They done shot folk, man. Some of them did 20 years, 25 years. One of my good brothers did 25 years for murder in California State Prison. Stab folk. Then committed a lot of adultery. Lied dishonored our parents and not, not just lied about things, but bear false witness on people. Were idolaters. Y'all show me which one of them 10 commandments you could just break willy nilly. And it was a sacrifice being made in the law of Moses. That would be like, oh, what'd he do? Oh, he, oh, y'all call him building a bail? Uh, joint? No, it's all good. We just tear the joint down. Now say you ain't gonna do it again, man. And go ahead and take an ox to the temple. That don't, that didn't exist. And on Yom Kippur that you read about in Leviticus 2016, that because every sin isn't caught by man and God knows how much sin really is among the people, them sins that you could die for, look, outside of sickness and disease and all kind of other stuff that'll kill human beings, the most high God through his mercy gave them the Azazel goat on Yom Kippur as an example of every year y'all being reminded i gotta do something to clean y'all up and to take away y'all sin and the sin offering was made during atonement for the people because not every adultery not every murder was solved y'all live in a country today every murder ain't solved in your own community every bank robbery every shooting every this every rape ain't solved y'all think every rape was solved in israel every murder so what happens for all of that blood and evil in the land that's just sitting there, never judged by man? The most high in his mercy, y'all. I don't I don't know how Katz is looking at. Don't romanticize ancient Israel, people. That was a wicked damn place. And had a couple good shining moments. That's it. A very evil nation with a couple moments, man. Read your Bible and tell me I'm lying. You read me the glorious narrative of this righteous people. It don't exist because if any of us think we the children of Israel, if it was another way, we shouldn't even be having this teaching. I'm in Buffalo, New York. My bro is in Maryland. Some of y'all and all of these other places. We should be sitting in the land of our fathers on a, a mountainside somewhere. <laughs> having this discussion. Why are you in captivity? Why are you a child of the captivity? Oh, it's the awakening. Awakening for what? What would you sleep from? Why are you over here? Why are you calling? Why are you talking? To, why are you so mad at the white man? Why? Yeah, Garth. Absalom was wilder. So was Adonijah. So was uh, Amnon. All David's sons turned out to be crazy wicked, right? Even Solomon later on fell to some, some trashness, right? But at any rate, let's go ahead and continue this, bro. This is what Yeshua came to do for Israel, right? Now, verse 42, go ahead and look at this. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Hold on. The Gentiles was hearing that and was like, wow. What? Because these God, do y'all understand Gentiles was at synagogue? So in chapter 15, when James said, yo, the brothers who, be who believe in, in these synagogues, y'all go, and y'all starting to see these God fearers, these proselytes who believe in the Messiah. 
Yo, leave them alone, man. Yeah, at the synagogue, the, the, the rabbis trying to put burdens on them. Y'all think that's what we about to do? No, they got to have some basic decency, but they got to believe in our master. Moses is read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. We're not here to teach them all the law. Anything they need to learn from law, they'll get it as they continue, as whenever they continue or choose to continue to go every Sabbath. But guess what? When these Gentiles and Jew believers continue to go to synagogue, they wanted to hear the Torah explained, but it didn't mean that that was a rejection of Hamashiach. Y'all do see when Paul showed up, Gentiles was at synagogue. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? So the Gentiles was like, bro, can y'all come back next Shabbat? Verse 43, bro. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. These are Jews in the from the synagogue who was like, wow, and religious proselytes because they were learning about Israel promises. And they like, wow, this is happening for Israel. But check this out. Verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Who going to deny that this was a whole, yo, you know what? I'm going to guarantee you it's a, it, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to guarantee you. I'm going to conject that there's a great possibility that the Gentiles came so deep that they probably outnumbered Jews at, 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 at this one. The next, next week, next Shabbat. Oh man, this synagogue filled in a way that, yo, these, do y'all know that just that many people coming for Paul? When the rabbis was like, because remember, I said when the Jews were going out of the synagogue, the leadership didn't know this was going to happen. Man, that next week, man, when that, man, I bet you them leaders was like, yo, they here to hear who? They probably came in and whispered to the rabbi under their breath. Y'all ever seen, uh, no, yo, what's my joy? Hey, 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 Ashton. Ashton. Talk to me. Yo, what's that Steven Seagal joint when he was when he was Molly whopping the Jamaicans, dog? Is that Mark for Death? Uh, Mark for Death. <laughs> Yo, son, you remember when he killed the first Jamaican dude in the club? The roster dude threw him out the window. Was it the pool hall or the club? Yeah, the pool hall or the bar, yeah. whatever. But he, the pool table was upstairs. And <laughs> Yo, remember when they came and told Screwface? Dude walked in, Screwface was at his little meeting with his man's dude walked in and whispered in his ear, and Screwface was like, Ukili, white boy hatcher. <laughs> that man said, Ukili, who Ukili? <laughs> white boy hatcher. <laughs> yo, the rabbis was up in the joint. Them cats came in like, like, yo, that dude Shaul and Barnabas back, like, yo, all these Gentiles didn't come. They're not here to hear y'all. They here to hear what these dudes got to say about this Jesus. Who? Sheesh. They come here, oh, Paul and Barnabas. <laughs> oh, Gilly, white boy. Oh, he said, white boy Hatcher. <laughs> My bad, y'all. But hey, don't come for me, y'all. I got, I got some vanity in life. I like movies and stuff. I don't play video games. I can't hoop no more. I'm, I'm, I'm in my mid forties now, and my right knee at times just let me know. You ain't if you ain't got a contract, just leave it alone, man. If you at the park, shoot, shoot, shoot some foul shots, but don't be out here trying to run around do what you was doing. I was trying to dunk on dudes when I was 22, like I had a contract. I done sprained all kind of ankles, twisted my knee, damn near broke my arm a couple times because I'm trying to sky over dudes and they want to foul me. You know what I mean? So I, I done broke myself up a little bit in life. And uh yeah, so I don't got them vanities no more. So I Netflix and chill for real. <laughs> I sit up and watch a whole bunch of Kung Fu movies on you. My wife be like, they, they ain't got like the English uh version. Cause I like watching them joints with subtitles. Cause I want to hear the, I want to hear the original grunts and in and, and the, and the inflections of the real voice. I don't want to hear no British voice over Jet Li. Got Jet Li sounding like damn Alfred and Batman. Come on, man. I, yo, man, what y'all doing over here, man? But all yeah, right, true y'all. story. I put uh, some of the homies on to uh, Ip Man on Saturday, man. Huh? 
I said, true story. I put some of the homies on the Ip Man on Saturday. They was lacking, son? They was caught lacking. Dude, they probably was sitting up there like. That dojo scene, not the dojo, but you know, with the rice bag. (laughs) All right, we, all right, y'all, we digressed a little bit. Okay. We all right, let's get back on track. So they're about to do what? You're about to see outside of the land. You about to start seeing Israel provoked to jealousy. Okay, so the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city came together to hear Paul and them. Verse 45, bro, go ahead. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. And spake against those things that which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. Right. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and Pay said, attention. It Go was ahead. necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. To who? To Israel, to the Jew first, and then the Gentile. Go ahead. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Now, Paul and Barnabas just tossed a young dagger because when many people go and read this, we're about to go read where he got where he's quoting. He said the Lord commanded us this. I'm arguing. Paul isn't saying the Lord told me and Barnabas this exactly in these words. No, he's saying the true Israel who going to follow Messiah has been commanded in the prophets to do this work, to get ourselves in order and to also be a light to the Goyim. And look at this. Go ahead. And Go when the ahead. Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life, believed. Okay. So you start to see this is going to be an issue. And it's been an issue ever since up to this moment, right? But what does Paul mean for the Lord so commanded us saying, I have set thee to be a light to the young tiles? Where are you getting that the Lord said this to you? Let's go to Isaiah 49. Paul is quoting the prophet. So let us go read the prophet and prayerfully understand. Okay, so Isaiah 49, Mm -hmm. and when we get there, go ahead, brother, verse one. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadows of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me and said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I've labored in vain. I've spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. And now, saith the Lord, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered, Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. The most high here is, look, brothers and sisters, this is Christ, the spirit of prophecy talking here. And when many theologians run here and say, look, Isaiah 49 is pointing to Christ. Yes, it is. But not just merely the man Christ who appeared, but the body that forms as him in the world when he's no longer seen in the world. Christ is still on the earth in what? In another body. (laughs) Yo, do we get why Christ was speaking the way he was speaking? So when theologians use this and say, this is talking about Jesus. Jesus is that serpent who God brought, I'm sorry, that serpent, that servant that Yah brought forth from the womb to gather Israel to himself. And this is who Yah was talking about. Continue, bro, verse six. 
And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So the brothers and sisters, hold on. I give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Brothers and sisters, Paul and Barnabas was challenging the Jews to say that if those of us who believe in Messiah are the servant where this if we're in the spirit of Hamashiach where his body he he's the head so whatever the body does is a command from the head just like your body so when we are obedient we will be the salvation of God to the end of the earth by what by preaching the way unto the father to them and that is only through christ y'all this is what paul was saying he's saying the lord commanded us that we should blah 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 he quoted that end of verse six verbatim hallelujah now for some people that might be like wait hold on hold on let me show you young something else just as a proof text to show you what i'm thinking of hey ashta you're familiar that in the book of Genesis, the serpent was told that the seed of the woman would bruise him in the head and he would bruise the seed of the woman in the heel, right? Correct. Romans 16. All right. And I think we got one more after this. Romans 16. When we get to Romans chapter 16, Paul is saluting the believers in Christ, all in these various families that have come unto salvation, Jew and Gentiles are being mentioned in this letter. And look at what he says here. He says this, verse 16, start there. Romans 16 and 16. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Mm. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I'm glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Amen. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So, who is the seed of the woman? It's the church in Christ. It starts with Christ. He is the head. We are the body, allegedly. So when Paul says the God of peace will bruise Satan under your feet shortly, isn't this hearkening back to Genesis 3? Under your feet. Brothers and sisters, this is what they understood. It is happening two ways, naturally and spiritually. I see the question that Sister V asked here. Hold on, let me throw my spectacles on. Question, Gentiles were able to be in the synagogue along with Judah as opposed to just the courtyard of the temple? Well, yes, yeah, Sister V, love, because we saw in Acts 13 that Paul and them was in Antioch. Sis, they in Asia Minor. They ain't nowhere near Jerusalem. That little Jerusalem law, that was only for people in the temple, but still in the land of Israel, if a Gentile circumcised himself and came under the covenant with Israel, you couldn't keep him out of the temple precincts. This was just the nations in general. So even in Israel, a Gentile who became circumcised was treated like one born in the land. One law for you and for the stranger in the land. He shall be treated as homeborn. So in that context, those quote unquote Gentiles always had access to the temple only if they joined Israel fully under the old covenant with the sign of Abraham in their flesh. But throughout the rest of the land of Israel, yeah, the synagogue, yeah, yeah, easy. And remember, at this time, these synagogues are everywhere. So, yes, yeah, sis, 
a salute uh, to Clark. Praise y'all for the edification, right? Right. So we see here that when Paul says, when Paul and Barnabas, because he didn't just say it himself, him and Barnabas said, look, Lord, the Lord said to the son of the stranger in Isaiah 56, who keep my covenant and love my law and my ordinance. Many of them shall get a name better than sons and daughters and their sacrifices and their offerings shall be accepted on my altar for my house shall be called in house of prayer for all people. Y'all didn't heard people quote the damn house of prayer text a hundred years. And that's how simple it is. But for Israel who rejects Christ and don't understand nothing but jealousy because of that. But I don't got nothing to say about it because it's the will of Yah. I'm just letting you all know that as in our nation as a whole will continue to be jealous because of this, but refuse to repent. I as an individual have gotten over my jealousy because now I think I see. And I'm doing this because I want you all to sit and consider in yourselves if you see. Everybody running around here calling themselves Yo, the awakening is for me at this juncture ain't got nothing to do with going in the street telling some dude here, Hebrew Israelite. I don't do that. I don't hit the streets to do that. Sinners of the earth have to repent and desire to leave the image of the first Adam that we walk in and take on the image of the second Adam. And that's for all the sons who carry the image of the first Adam. Israel ain't the only ones who carry the image of the first Adam. All do. Male and female. She got to repent. We got to repent. Now that I understand this, oh no. My job is to tell all men everywhere something. You feel me? Hey, Ak, I think I got one more text here I want to bring up. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Acts 4. I got one more I want to throw on the table just so you can all see. Acts chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And we'll end it here for the night. I think the message is clear. I don't think I got to belabor the point and just try to be deep and be heard and put five more scriptures on the table. Prayerfully, this one more will be useful. Um, Acts 4. Let me get there with you, Brody. Let me plug up my computer. I see one joint near young empty. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay. There we go. Okay. So we're in Acts chapter four, right? And when we get there. Let's go to, uh, let's start around verse, hold on, where you at? How I keep losing my page? There we go. Okay. Start at verse one. Yep, but hold on. No, not verse one. Yeah, verse one. <laughs> And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached though Jesus the resurrection, preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the words believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas and John and Alexander, and as many as were the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. That's a lot of people. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? So Peter and John healed someone. I believe it was a lame guy. So they going to question him like, yo, man. How y'all do that, man? What power? What name? Like, what? So go ahead, verse eight. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, 
if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. It is Jesus who healed this man, but Jesus ain't nowhere in sight. So even though through the power of the Ruach, the believers, the apostles, the early disciples were still, they picked up where Yeshua left off. They didn't say, well, yo, son, we just got it like that. We them boys. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We them boys. No, that ain't, that ain't what they did. <laughs> that is not what they did. They said, yo, we're going to let it be known. Not just merely by that name, but literally we telling you it is by Jesus. Jesus held this man. Don't just look at me like me and John, just them boys. Jesus did that. But where Jesus at? He's in his body. And not only do Israelites who claim to believe have to truly be in his spirit to be a part of his body, but he's calling others to the fold who won't be given any less a penny for coming in in the last hour in the plan of salvation, just as Israel will claim, yo, we've been here since the gates opened, since God came and gave his law and, 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 and showed his glory to the world by whooping on Egypt and bringing us out of oppression. We've been here all day in the heat. Remember the parable of the vineyard, man. Israel got their young penny. And the Gentiles get they penny too. And that's just what it's going to be. And if you don't like it and you got a problem with me, so what? After you get done cussing me out, guess what? Them scriptures ain't going to change. Them scripts ain't going nowhere. They've been around for a couple of them things. We'll all be gone before them things gone anywhere. So it just is what it is, man. So y'all see how Christ is still the one being, remember Yeshua said this to them. He said, I will send the Holy Ghost with you and you won't be alone. And I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. That's what Jesus told him. I'm sending the Holy Ghost and I'm going to be with you all the way to the end of the world. So this is the mystery and this is the body of Christ. And Christ is the householder handing out the penny to Israelites who claim they're looking for the, the living wage so that they can live. Well, I found others out there who was idle and I knew I know I know they need it, too, even though they ain't been here all day. I know they need it, too. Y'all come. I know it's only an hour left. Y'all going to come up in here. And when they get the penny, the other cats going to get jealous who've, who've been there all day. Israel, just be what it is, man. Just make sure you do what you do to get your penny, homie. Or your your chance at eternal life. You ain't gonna stop the Gentiles from getting nothing. Them Gentiles then moved on and did their thing. Cats running around here talking about, man, if you ain't learning from Israel, you ain't the no, man. No, nah. bump that. Some of these Gentiles making y'all look bad. I'll give an example. I don't care who don't like it. James White washed and cleansed twice. The leader of GOCC. The head teacher, Raka. James White ate that man food to the point I was upset they even had seen it. I was pissed that dudes even let me know it, it, it was out here. Why y'all even tell me that? I didn't want to see that crap. This dude come on here just spewing this nonsense. I would have washed him. I would have used some of the same stuff that James White used against him. But at the end of the day, see, it's not new, y'all, because y'all got to check my file. Me and my bros was getting that Raka and GOCC back in 2012 when they was real heavy on that. The Bible teaching you got to leave America because when the revelation, when it say come out of her, my people and get come leave out of Babylon, the great that that was talking about America. So they had a whole bunch of people following them over to the Middle East. Now, all of a sudden, y'all left Babylon, right? 
Why all these people reaching back into Babylon to their mamas in them? Talking about, can y'all send me two, three thousand until I get on my feet? My brother Judah was like, yo, y'all left Babylon and told us we was dumb to stay here because we ain't going with y'all. Why y'all keep writing letters to Babylon? Why y'all keep making phone calls back to Babylon? Why y'all keep making phone calls back to Babylon? Why y'all want us to send a uh, 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 Western Unions <laughs> to Cairo? I ain't sending you nothing. And some of y'all might think that I'm, I'm being too facetious. No, my congregation was reached out to by a couple of worried mothers who had young sons, 19, daughters done left, college age. And they like, yo, who, who is this group? Do y'all know about them? Because we had people who formerly used to follow the GOCC doctrine who started to tune into us. And they was the ones who was giving some of these people, parents, our phone numbers. So we had to get on the Internet and do a couple of teachings coming at recall. Unfortunately, I ain't got no hate from the brother, but some of his interpretation of scripture is trash, in my opinion. And if he heard me enough, he'd probably say the same thing, to be fair about me. Um, so, yeah. So when people talk about, oh, if you a Gentile, if you ain't learning from Israel, you don't know the truth. I'm just saying. I don't agree with that. I don't, that, that ain't Bible. In the words of my bro, Berean, that ain't Bible. <laughs> hey, Sean, I, I, I was cold for that. I was cold, cold, cold as ice long ago, baby, baby. Hey, it is what it is. So I'm going to end it right there. I didn't have enough fun for two nights. Yo, Ashley, anything you want to say, bro, before we get up out of here? Uh, Peace to you in general, you know, appreciate you for uh, for pulling out the, the, the dojo practice sword and, and showing us a few katas mm. both uh, last night and tonight. You know, the vibes. Um, yeah. I uh, had some earlier, but it slipped my mind. But from last night, just an observation. You have brought up the text that talks about how. Um, and I had it written down last night. I just forgot it. Today, I want to say it's in Corinthians, but I could be wrong where it says like the Greeks um, desire, what is it, knowledge and the, 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 the Jews uh, seek a sign. Is that the text? Yeah. You're talking about the Jews seek after a sign and the Greeks look for wisdom. Exactly. Exactly. You had uh, mentioned that. And um, just in general, over time, just to kind of get your thoughts on this. I've thought about that, and especially in the context of what I've seen over the course of my life, of course, you know, identifying as Israel and believing not all, but many of the individuals brought to the Americas in the transatlantic slave trade are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. um, and with me considering many of those individuals to be Israel or to be Jews, right? It's just interesting, even when I think about how uh, at least modern day, I, don't, I can't speak for 100, 200, 300 years ago, but even in the West and the church world, it seems like, um, and obviously, correct me if, if, I'm, if I'm taking it too literally or figuratively, but it seems like a lot, even in the church world, right, in the Western Christian church world amongst black churches, it's very um, spiritually touchy-feely-ish emotionalism ish you know um a desire for for a feel or energy or for god to do something and move in a certain way right but then i i, I noticed and this is from my own time amongst church congregations with you know our, our gentile brothers and sisters but just in general it's, it's a much more um almost cold dry scholastic academic approach you know what i'm saying like that desire yeah. for information. So that that's just every time I hear the scripture, it just makes me think about that more and more. But that's all. Other than that, though, man, you know, we appreciate you to the max, dog. Well, praise y'all, bro. And, and and I understand what you're saying. And I agree. It, it happens a lot. Um, and it's just us wanting to tap into God as a people. That's what I see. And 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 you know, I'll be in these platforms, and sometimes you got our brother bless they heart. These brothers and sisters that get on after we done, we we sitting here debating. So I guess they tired of the debate. So they like, I'm hearing a lot of intelligence and people 
you know, a lot of breaking down of this, that, and the third. But when we gonna get back to the spirit? I think the most underestimated work of the spirit is the written word. The scripture says, holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The scripture also mm -hmm. said that the most high preserves the pen of the scribes. This doesn't exist for no reason. Christ said the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So while some people want to feel like, I don't know, they're a prayer warrior and whatever. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but go ahead and get your young prayer warrior on. I'm going to be a go out here, preach the word of God and hope I can help baptize someone into the kingdom of God warrior. Jesus yeah, even man. said, when you pray, the Lord is in heaven and you're on earth. So let your words be few. Cats be like, oh, and then they, they need to pray for five and ten damn minutes, man. Like, have you ever got in your closet and just prayed for an hour? No, I haven't. I have not. Now, I done probably got in some long ones by my estimation, just really crying to the Lord about some things going on. But y'all, the scripture says the Lord know what we have need of before we even ask. So Jesus said, look, don't use vain repetitions like the heathen. He said, for they believe by many words, they will be heard. Prayer warriors. All I'm going to say is the next time a pastor come in some community after some boy and lost his life and to try to, I don't know, put on a spectacle, might be some news cameras there or whatever. We bind right now this. We take back this. We declare right now what you not going to do. And a Negro get killed two days later. Mm. A, couple, a few more boys get killed over the next. Look, man, that's what's they hold on. The dudes from the church came out here and said they have bound Satan and that they declared him to be gone from around him. Something they were. He had no power here anymore. Satan ain't got no power here anymore. That's what I heard. They binded him up. Well, see, I, when I seen Satan bound in the revelation narrative, that Negro couldn't go. He couldn't move for for, for a millennium. Y'all mean to tell me you done came around here and said that you done bound up Satan and he can't come do nothing in this neighborhood no more and he going to stop killing these babies? But y'all never go in men face and say it. Y'all praying to some abs. Y'all praying and swinging at the air like Trey and boys in the hood when he came to Nima <laughs> Hall, when he came to Nima Hall house. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You know what I mean? It, it, get your frustration now. I, I know church. I know we tired. We tired of the evil. We tired of the babies dying. The mothers crying. I know. But don't come out here with this lack of power. You might get more done, man, if you just start to try to go through the community and build relationships with the boys who who selling the dope and shooting in your hood. I ain't walking up on no corner talking about y'all don't need to be selling drugs around here. And Man, I'm just walking in. Hey, man, how y'all doing out here? Y'all need prayer for anything, man? And I remember one time some dudes on the block. I was in Baltimore, and I remember some dudes was kind of like, they ain't expect that because we come through. When I'm cold, when I'm in cities, I look like this. And I might have on some, some chains and all that. You know, I'm, I'm all in my vanity trying to look cute, right? So we in Baltimore in the Brooklyn neighborhood and we walking up the block and boys is on the side of the store getting it in. And I know what it is to get it in because that used to be what I did for a young living, unfortunately. So I ain't walking up on them, going to tell them they did cause a trouble. Look, they mama and they grandmama and somebody else mama done cussed these boys out already in their life. I ain't need, I don't need to come say it. Why people act like when you come into these communities talking about you preaching the word? You act like somebody ain't said something you about to say. I don't need to feel that. I, I ain't coming to tell nobody who I don't know and ain't got no relationship with that what they better stop doing. No, I'm going to come to them and say, hey, bro, y'all need prayer for anything out here? We just walking through the hood, man. You know, life hard, homie. So we just, you know, we just praying for the community, bro. And some dudes was like, no, nah, I'm good, homie. You know what I mean? It's respect. 
I was like, no, that's what's up, bro. I get it. I said, but yo, you, you know what I mean? Y'all got any family, anything? Like y'all got kids or maybe a mom, maybe I got a grandmom at home. Somebody health ain't good. And they in y'all thoughts, no matter what y'all doing in y'all life, it's still people who y'all love. And y'all might even talk to God in your heart and just hope that they would get better. If you got any names to throw us, bro, we going to keep it moving. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll, we'll pray for him though. One dude was like, yo, word, you know what? No, homie, we can pray, yo. I want to pray for my mom. And with that, gave us the opportunity after the prayer to say, hey, bro, you know, like, yo, man, you you ever, you ever heard of Jesus, bro? Oh, yeah, I heard of Jesus, this, that, and the third. Like, yo, you believe he existed? And then like, well, you know, I mean, I ain't religious. And all of a sudden, here we go. So you can run in the hoods and nah, nah, nah. you can show up after the fact. A pastor who will preach on the corner because somebody got killed and ain't the pastor who walked through that neighborhood at least once a week with brethren from the church. Just walk through the hood 20 deep, praying for the people, talking with the people, saying hello to the mothers, saying hi to the kids, going shake the hand of the young brothers. Hey, young brothers. I know, you know, I mean, hey, man, y'all here surviving. Hey, man, I hope y'all be okay, man. And if you ever need to talk, man, if you, if you ever looking, man, and just talk to somebody, man. We right down here. And keep it moving. See, the people like, well, Jesus did this. Negro. Jesus was famous. They leave that part out about Jesus. Jesus' fame preceded him. When people, wait, hold on. Who, who at the square? Oh, the dude who healed the blind guys? The guy who cleansed the lepers? Wait, hold on. The dude who we heard in Bethany, that dude Lazarus died, and we heard all the way here, 60 miles away, that this dude supposedly brought a man back from the dead? Oh, he in the square? See, so when Jesus starts saying, hey, y'all, look, man, this is the problem. His reputation precedes him. What reputation have, are we establishing in a community to tell them the hard truth? Jesus didn't just pop up, listen to the hard truth. No, he popped up with a reputation and his reputation gave him the minutes he needed for the people to hear the hard message. I ain't coming into no community with a hard message when I ain't got no reputation in it. Whoever think I'm wrong, that's you. You show me how you get down and show me how you pulling people out the fire. And maybe I can learn from you. Maybe I can. But until then, though, man, we out here trying to blow life into people like them old cartridges from Super Nintendo. Real talk. And that's just what it is, man. So I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Came on tonight um, with part two. I pray that the whole thing together when you get to check it out again if you decide you know, let me go back and just listen to this that you get some edifying points and that it that it connects with what the lord is already showing you so that you'll just know how to move with your brothers and sisters according to the flesh who believe as well as your brothers and sisters who may be of other ethnic groups but they believe yo we in this thing together man and whoever don't like that I'm, a, I'm honestly going to say that more than likely they're a, you, they're in the body possibly, but they still have to grow or they just may not really be a member of the body like they claim. So with that, y'all, I'm going to say good night, shalom, and most high willing, this coming Friday, I'll be coming on at about 9, 30, 10 o'clock because I'm supposed to go to VA uh, this coming weekend to do a community outreach event. Um, keep that in prayer. Me and some bros are supposed to meet out there and go do some preaching in Virginia this coming weekend. So um, that's on the table. But hopefully still that Friday night, I'll be able to broadcast from where I'm at. All right. So until then, Shalom. Blessings to you and your families. Salute, Ash. I appreciate you, bro. No doubt. Shalom. Shalom. Yes, sir.